This is my main workhorse adjustable power supply. Got it off Amazon about a year ago. Kind of impressed with it, but it's not perfect. And uh, I wanted to kind of tear it up. One of the biggest problems I've had with this thing is the voltage adjustment is stable once you leave the knobs alone. But while you're turning these knobs, and you can see I've got the, the oscilloscope working as a, as a really crude voltmeter. Um, as I ramp up the voltage, there are these little glitches. And I'm turning the knob clockwise this whole time. The voltage should only ever be increasing in a, in a monotonic fashion. But what I'm seeing is, is a lot of seesawing back and forth on that voltage, even with the load attached. Um, that, to me, speaks of bad potentiometers in the front panel. Um, it's got a coarse and fine adjust. The fine adjust seems to be okay, but uh, it's, it's smaller by about a factor of 10. So, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a, of a nonlinearity there, but that's not as much of a problem on, on the fine knob. Never forget to wear protection. Here's the front panel circuit board. Don't mind the thermal damage to my ESD mat. That's normal. Course adjust for the current and voltage and the fine adjust for the current and voltage. And also the display panel up here. And if we flip it over, these four potentiometers are simply brought out to bottom four wires on this, um, this ribbon cable. Uh, G is ground here, um, A is the current output, V is the voltage output, and R is a reference voltage. And I've, I've uh, traced out um, on this, on this two-layer circuit board, you can, you can pretty easily follow the traces. Um, I've traced out what these circuits look like, both for the, the current and voltage. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, all of this fancy embedded stuff up here is um, just driving the uh, the seven segment voltage and current meters on the on the front. This is a, a seven segment LED driver. Um, this is a single op amp, and this is a microcontroller. Um, really interesting, actually. The thing is is based on an 8051, uh, 1980 computer architecture right there. Now what I'm trying to do here is very dangerous. Please don't try to do this unless you know exactly what you're doing. You should never power up and attempt to use a piece of equipment that plugs into the wall without the case on for a, for a multitude of reasons, mostly safety. But I do want to see the voltages present on this circuit while the device is, is powered up and running. Now I've already done a bunch of work to figure out whether or not the power supply that powers this internal circuit board is isolated from the power line and ground uh, because the thing about oscilloscopes is that they are invariably connected to earth ground and you can really hurt yourself or blow up your scope or blow up the, the device um, if you're not very careful about paying attention to where the isolation is. In, in this case for this device the entire thing is, is isolated from the power lines, which is lucky for me. It makes my job really easy. If it wasn't, I'd probably have to run my scope off of an isolation transformer um, and move everything else plugged into the wall off of my desk and wear rubber gloves and 
try my best not to kill myself with this thing. Turning it on. Hey, no sparks. No popped breakers. Awesome. So it looks like that reference voltage is just just a constant. Can change this uh, output voltage, and that doesn't seem to change at all. So it looks like the reference is just just DC, and it looks to be at um, five divs at point one, and a 10x probe is five volts. So R is at five volts. G is at zero, um, and the potentiometers just swipe between zero and five, and that gets converted to the target voltage for the output. Now I'm going to take a look at the voltage coming out of the voltage set potentiometers. Clip on there real carefully. Not like this is dangerous or anything. Okay, and turning up, yeah, I see... I'm sure you see that too, a lot of jitter. Let's zoom into this for you. Turning clockwise, turning counterclockwise. Yeah, jumping all over the place. Turning clockwise. Nasty, okay. So there's our problem, definitely the pots. So I was eager to kind of get a baseline for what's normal for a pot, so I went through the junk bin and find one that looked pretty good, and um, soldered it onto a 9-volt battery. Uh, I really like 9-volt batteries for experimental work. There's no beating and completely isolated low-noise voltage supply for low-power stuff, at least. And you can see from the scope screen, as I, as I turn the knob of that pot, it's very smooth, and you can make almost an arbitrarily small adjustment to the output value, and this is what we want. At this point I started wondering how precise I could get, so I dug through the potentiometer junk bin and um, found some some really nice 20 turn trim pots. And it turns out these were actually worse than the than the three quarter turn pots um, because of the way they're built. I was kind of expecting, you know, micrometer resolution from from turning this tiny screw. I thought I'd be able to dial in the set point down to the millivolts because a uh, whole turn is like one volt, one and a half volts, something like that. But if you look closely at that scope trace, as I turn the screw with uh, constant speed, the output changes in these discrete little steps instead of smoothly increasing. And the reason for that is that this is a wire wound potentiometer. So most pots you're probably familiar with use this little track of uniformly deposited resistive material like graphite or, or some kind of conductive polymer. And there's a little wiper that, that kind of slides over the top and makes contact at a different point depending on how far you turn the knob. And with that set up, no matter how tiny an adjustment you put on that wiper, you should always see some change in the output. So. If you nudge the wiper just, you know, a micron to the right, the current is going to have an extra micron of graphite to go through, and the resistance will be just a tiny bit higher. I've taken one of these multi-turn trim pots apart so that I can show you the origin of that stepped response. So this is a this is a new one. It's a screw adjust. You can kind of see the uh, contact gantry move closer to the head of the screw as I tighten it. So that's the wiper of the pot moving back and forth as you adjust. Here's the screw. Now this, this might actually be more than 20 turns. I'm not sure I didn't count. the screw and the wiper, contact or whatever you call it in these. And this is the actual resistor that the wiper moves across. So before I tore it up, there were three connections. One on the right, one on the left. 
connect just to the metal wire wound resistor in the middle. And then that third pin connects to the, the screw wiper. And if you zoom in to this little metal wire wound resistor, this is just an eye loop on a holder. I think it's a 7X. I don't know if that'll come across, but you should be able to see tiny individual little windings because that resistor is just made of wire wrapped around a rod in a helix. And as you move the wiper across, it only ever touches one winding or the next. Yeah, I wanted to use junk, but I just didn't have one in the right size. All right, 5.0 is stable and it's easy to get to. Three point three is not hard. Twelve point six, twelve point eight, thirteen point one. 13.4, Yeah, this is so much better. This was the right call. I'm going to get so much more use out of this thing now that I know that I'm not going to blow out a 5 volt chip, a little voltage spike. Thanks for watching.